Season 1 of Ozark introduces Marty Bird, a financial advisor who, alongside his business partner Bruce, launders money for the Navarro drug cartel. When the cartel discovers that Bruce stole $8 million from them, they kill him. Thinking on his feet to save his own life, Marty promises he can launder half a billion dollars within five years in the Ozarks. Cartel leader Dell is suspicious of Marty's claims, but agrees to give Marty three months to launder $8 million as a trial run. If Marty succeeds, he'd be in deep with the cartel. If he fails, he and his family will be killed. And so Marty Bird and his family move to the Ozarks. There's his wife Wendy, who he has a strained relationship with after discovering she was having an affair. Also along for the ride are the Bird's children Charlotte, who resents her father for moving them from Chicago, and Jonah, who is much more interested in his family's new business. The Bird family moves into a new home in the Ozarks, but a condition of this sale requires its former owner her buddy, who is elderly and terminally ill, to live in the basement. At first, Wendy takes on a job working with a real estate agent named Sam Dermody. But after his mother dies and leaves him with a large fortune, Wendy starts being more hands-on with Marty's cartel dealings and manipulates Sam into doing her bidding. As Marty searches for a business to buy in the Ozarks to help launder money, the $8 million given to him by the cartel is stolen by the Langmore family. The Langmores are a family of broke criminals who aren't the smartest thieves around. The head of the Langmore family is Cade, who is currently serving time in prison. In his stead, the Langmore operations are run by his brothers Russ and Boyd. Russ has two sons, Wyatt and Three, and Cade has a daughter, Ruth, who is the only member of the family to possess any sort of savvy or intellect. Marty retrieves the cartel money back from the Langmores, but Ruth manages to persuade him to take her under his wing and teach her his ways. Unbeknownst to Marty, her ultimate goal is to learn his tricks of the trade, then kill him and steal all of his money. For Marty's money laundering venture, he takes over two local businesses. First, he invests in the Blue Cat Inn and enters into a bit of a relationship with its owner, Rachel. Although that relationship doesn't last long when Rachel discovers Marty's laundering scheme and takes off with a stack of cash. Then, with the help of Ruth, Marty pushes out the owner of the Lickety Split Strip Club to buy it for himself. Marty entrusts Ruth to run the strip club, which she does expertly, and the two forge a genuine bond. Unfortunately, Marty Marty is unaware that the former owner of the Lickety Splits was already laundering money for local heroin dealers Jacob and Darlene Snell. And so now the Snells force Marty to work for them. And the complications don't stop there. Marty realizes that a church would make for another great laundering system and offers to help build one for Pastor Mason Young, who currently preaches to boats on a lake. Unbeknownst to both Mason and Marty, the Snells use these boat gatherings to distribute heroin on the open water. Taking Mason's preaching to land would be another massive hit to the Snell business, and so they threatened to cut the baby out of Mason's pregnant wife's stomach if the church building wasn't scrapped. And though the church isn't built, Mason can't bring himself to return to preaching on the lake if it was being used for heroin distribution. And so, upon his refusal to preach, the Snells make good on their threat and and kill Mason's wife and deliver to him his newborn baby Zeke. And if all of that wasn't enough drama for Marty and his family, the FBI is looking into his ties to the Navarro drug cartel due to Marty's old business partner Bruce secretly being an informant. Agent Roy Petty heads to the Ozarks to find enough evidence to catch Marty, going undercover as a tourist who starts paying Russ Langmore to be his fishing guide. Throughout their time together, Petty initiates a romantic relationship with Russ that at first is strictly for the case, but grows into something genuine. Under the instruction of Cade, Ruth and her uncles conspire to kill Marty by electrocuting him. When Russ confesses this to Petty, the FBI agent secretly intervenes to save Marty's life. Petty then blows his cover to Russ and explains that he recorded Russ's confession on the Marty Bird murder attempt. But instead of turning into an informant like Petty hoped, Russ and Boyd plan to rob and kill Marty, then run away. Ruth discovers her uncle's plan and sabotages them, killing them both before they can kill Marty. 
Marty then successfully launders the full $8 million for the cartel, and in return, they give him another $50 million to launder. When Dell arrives in the Ozarks, Marty tries to broker a deal between the cartel and the Snells. The cartel would now handle the heroin distribution for the Snells, and the Snells would allow a casino to be built on their land to launder cartel money. It's a deal that seems to make everyone happy, but after some harsh words are exchanged, the erratic Darlene Snell shoots and kills Dell. And just like that, things just got even more complicated for Marty Bird. I want to cut in real quick and tell you about this video sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world, and it has helped me massively in my goal of learning a second language. My wife and I went on our honeymoon in Paris and completely fell in love with this city and planned to go back one day. The first time around, we didn't really do any preparation on learning even simple phrases in French, which made communication and travel pretty difficult. But now I'm using Babbel to learn French to not only help with basic communication, but to also help better immerse myself in the people and culture of a city that I love. I can take Babbel courses on my computer or anywhere when I'm on the go using their app on my phone. Their lessons are designed by real language professionals and are scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. Je m'appelle Maurice. These lessons help me learn how to have practical conversations about relationships, travel, business, and more. We're now three months into the new year and Babbel has helped me actually stick to my goal of learning a second language thanks to their addictive games expert crafted lessons and live classes. So click the link in the description to start your new language journey and get 60% off your subscription. And let me know what language you're trying to learn in the comments below. Thanks to Babbel for sponsoring this video and merci de voir regard. Now let's get back to the recap. In Season 2 of Ozark, the Mexican cartel sends its American attorney Helen Pierce to sort out all of the drama in the wake of Dell's death. Helen agrees to Marty's plan of the cartel working with the Snell family to distribute heroin in exchange for land for a money laundering casino, but following the death of Dell, the Snells would need to kill one of their own. And so, Jacob kills his trusted employee, Ash. And now that the cartel and the Snells are in agreement, Marty just has to go about ensuring that the state senator would allow the construction of the casino. And that is easier said than done, as the Kansas City Mafia have their own plans for the area and violently oppose the casino. In turn, Wendy Bird teams up with political donor Charles Wilkes to blackmail the senators and ensure that legislation goes through to build the casino. As the Birds and Ruth shift their focus to the casino plans, they entrust Wendy's old gullible pal Sam Dermody to manage the Lickety Split strip club. Meanwhile, Agent Petty is still trying to take down Marty Bird. First, he pressures a drug-addicted Rachel into returning to Ozark to spy on Marty. Rachel betrays Petty and alerts Marty that he is being watched, and in return, Marty pays for Rachel to go to rehab. Next, Petty publicly interrogates Ruth to make Helen and the cartel think she's an FBI informant. Helen and her goons waterboard Ruth, who maintains her innocence. This results in Helen remarking to Marty how impressed she is in Ruth's toughness. Petty then sets his sights on the Snell heroin farm. Helen implores the Snells to burn the crops, but Darlene resists. So the birds send Buddy to burn the crop before the FBI can investigate. Unfortunately for Buddy, his heart gives out after successfully saving the day. After his many failed attempts to take down the birds, Petty leaves Ozark and becomes a joke to the FBI. Darlene Snell is furious about her crops being burned and starts lacing the heroin they supply to the cartel with fentanyl, causing many users to OD. Marty and Helen then threaten Jacob with imminent domain claiming the government could seize the Snell land if they didn't want to sell. Jacob agrees to cooperate with Marty and the cartel, and resolves to kill Darlene to keep the peace. But Darlene discovers Jacob's plan, and poisons her husband before he can kill her. Elsewhere in Season 2, Wendy Bird runs into Mason Young, who is now homeless and preaching on the street with his baby Zeke in tow. When the police take Zeke into custody, a distraught Mason holds Wendy at gunpoint, and demands that Marty bring Zeke back to him. Him. Marty and Charles Wilkes manage to secure the release of Zeke to bring him back to Mason, but in the confrontation, Marty is forced to kill the pastor to save his wife, leading to Marty and Wendy taking in Zeke as their own. When the volatile Darlene comes around wanting to take Zeke for herself, the birds have no choice but to hand the child over in the hopes of calming the erratic heroin producer down. Also in Season 2, Cade Langmore is paroled from his prison sentence to look after Wyatt and 3 following 
following the death of their father, Russ. Cade's freedom creates a lot of problems for Ruth, who is on a successful path following Marty, but her father is constantly trying to get her to betray her employer and steal his millions. Ruth has proved herself valuable to the cartel, and when Marty makes plans to get out of the money laundering game and flee to Australia with his family, it's Ruth he plans to leave his empire with. This spurns Ruth to finally tell her father off to officially side with Marty. In retaliation, Cade seeks out Agent Petty to offer his assistance in taking down the Bird family. When the defeated Petty refuses, Cade snaps and kills the FBI agent. Cade is then forced to flee the Ozarks, but before he leaves, he tries to blackmail Ruth into giving him some money by threatening to tell Wyatt and Three that she was responsible for their father's death. Ruth balks at her father's extortion attempt and mournfully confesses to her cousins herself. And so, Cade leaves town, but on the way out, he is ambushed and killed by the cartel at the request of Wendy. And then Wendy informs Marty that the family would not be fleeing to Australia, but would instead be staying put in the Ozarks. This shakes Marty, who begins to fear that his wife has gone too far in her new thirst for power. And to make matters worse, Kansas City Mafia leader Frank Cosgrove arrives and blows up Marty's office as a warning to Marty that their dissatisfaction with the casino development was far from resolved. In Season 3 of Ozark, Marty Bird is doing everything he can to keep his affairs in order and his family safe. He pays off the Cosgrove family and the KC Mafia, and even offers them a percentage stake in the newly opened Missouri Bell Casino. FBI agent Maya Miller begins looking into the Bird's financial records in order to prove they are laundering money. So Marty has to navigate a vigorous investigation, and Marty agrees to enter couples therapy with his wife Wendy, but secretly pays off their therapy pursue for her to sway their sessions in Marty's favor. But for all of Marty's efforts, the Bird family find themselves in constantly escalating dangers. To solve the problem of FBI agent Miller looking into the casino's finances, the Birds and Ruth must come up with new ways to launder money. First, they try smurfing, hiring teams of people to make bets and lose small amounts of money every day. And eventually, they escalate to having Wendy's old gullible pal Sam Dermody, now engaged to a stripper, to bet big Big and lose large sums of his fortune with the promise of being reimbursed by the birds. When Agent Miller catches on to this scheme, she has Sam arrested. Wendy Bird believes that the best way to further protect her family is to grow even more powerful, so she teams up with cartel lawyer Helen Pierce to rapidly expand Navarro's empire in America. Marty, fearing the expansion plans would put the family at greater risk, constantly tries to thwart his wife's power moves. But when Navarro hears of the Bird family dysfunction from Helen, he kidnaps Marty and brings him to Mexico for some torturing. The only way for Marty to save himself is by promising Navarro that he could turn Agent Miller to the cartel's side. And so, Marty returns to America and is more amenable to Wendy's expansion plans, and also works on flipping Agent Miller's allegiance by confessing his crimes to her to gain her trust. Part of the Navarro expansion plans include buying a Kentucky horse farm, but that turns out to be just a plot by Navarro to castrate the prize stud horse housed there by his cartel rival Lagunas. This escalates a drug war that had started in Mexico between the rivals and brings it to America where the birds are now caught in the crossfire. The strain of the escalating drug war, the FBI investigation, and the conflicting business plans further fractures the marriage of Marty and Wendy, who accidentally explode on each other in a therapy session, revealing all of their criminal secrets to their therapist Sue. Marty pays Sue off to stay quiet, but Helen has Navarro enforcer Nelson kill the therapist to ensure her silence. Making things even harder for the Bird family to navigate is the arrival of Wendy's brother, Ben. Ben discovers the truth about Marty and Wendy's various criminal affiliations and ingratiates himself into the family business. When Ben strikes up a romantic relationship with Ruth, he stops taking his bipolar medication and his erratic behavior begins to become a liability. Meanwhile, the KC Mafia head Frank Cosgrove has his men transporting money for the Birds. At a money drop-off between Ruth and some Cosgrove, Grove men, the Lagunas cartel shows up and opens fire, killing the Mafia members while Ruth narrowly escapes thanks to some help from Ben and Jonah, who were observing the meeting with Jonah's drone. The business partnership between the Mafia and the Birds becomes increasingly strained due to Cosgrove's hot-headed son Frank Jr. constantly creating conflict with Ruth. He starts
start to scene at the casino and needs to be thrown out by Ruth. His men are constantly disobeying Ruth's money drop protocols, and he even begins loan sharking at the Missouri Bell against Marty and Ruth's wishes. Eventually, this escalates to Frank Jr. and his men beating Ruth to near death. This causes the birds to pay out and cut ties with the Casey Mafia, but Ruth wants them to go even further and have Frank Jr. killed. When they refuse, Ruth begins to feel betrayed by the birds. Ben encourages Ruth to turn on Marty and Wendy due to their seeming disloyalty. And let's not forget about another enemy of the birds, Darlene Snell. She's still bitter over the burning of her poppy fields, but now that they've begun to regrow, she's planning her own moves. When Wyatt Langmore is arrested, for breaking and entering, Darlene pays his bail and employs him on her heroin farm. The two even enter into a bit of an inappropriate romantic relationship. Darlene then makes moves to bring Ruth over to her side, and to prove her loyalty, she confronts Frank Jr. and shoots his genitals off as revenge for his attack on Ruth. And then, to top things off, Darlene pays a visit to Frank Sr. and offers him a 50-50 business partnership as an apology. She'd supply the heroin, the KC Mafia would distribute it. As the season nears its finale, Ben's mental health begins to deteriorate. He publicly confronts and attacks Marty at a charity event they were throwing at the Missouri Bell, and then goes to the home of Helen Pierce and tells her teenage daughter Erin that Helen and the birds worked for a Mexican drug cartel and were responsible for several murders. In response, Helen tells Navarro that the Bird family had become too big of a liability and is given the go-ahead to do whatever seems necessary. With their backs against the wall and the threat of death imposed against their entire family, Wendy is forced to make her toughest decision yet and gives up her own brother to the cartel, who send Nelson to kill Ben. This tragic decision causes Ruth to officially cut ties with the birds. Still fearing that Navarro would view the birds as too big of a liability, Marty and Wendy devise a plan to prove themselves more valuable to the cartel than Helen. And so, Marty takes Jonah's drone footage of the Lagunas attack to Agent Miller in order to secure the arrest of the Lagunas men, a small victory in the ongoing drug war. Navarro then calls Marty, Wendy, and Helen to Mexico to attend his son's baptism. Fearing for their lives, the birds arrive in Mexico via private jet, where Helen is shockingly executed by Nelson, and Navarro welcomes the birds, celebrating an increased cooperation between the three of them. In Season 4 of Ozark, the birds are still reeling from the execution of Helen. Navarro introduces the birds to his hot-headed nephew Javi, who has his sights set on succeeding Navarro as the leader of the cartel. Navarro warns Marty and Wendy that if Javi detects any weakness or problems from the birds, he will kill them all. Navarro also explains to the birds why he killed Helen, but kept them alive. Navarro wants the birds to help broker a deal with the FBI that would ensure his immunity from any prosecution, allowing him to retire with his family in peace. As they return to America, Marty and Wendy realize how impossible it would be for them to negotiate immunity for such an infamous drug kingpin. Javi then follows Marty and Wendy back to the Ozarks to try to run things his way, insisting that the birds put a definitive end to Darlene's heroin business. That'd be easier said than done, as Jonah has become disillusioned with his family following his Uncle Ben's death, and has joined Darlene, Wyatt, and Ruth's business to help them launder money. And so there's no way for Marty and Wendy to take down Darlene without also taking down their son. To better protect themselves from threats on all sides, Marty and Wendy set their sights on amassing more political power. Wendy brings on Jim Rattlesdorf to be the bird's personal lawyer and political strategist. Jim helps Wendy use the Bird's Charity Foundation to bribe politicians and rig elections. But in order for this plan to be successful, the Charity Foundation would need a lot more money. And so the Bird's cut a deal with Claire Shaw, CEO of pharmaceutical company Shaw Medical, to sell her Navarro's drugs, which will save Claire hundreds of millions of dollars in the manufacturing of her own pharmaceuticals. In exchange for this deal, Claire agrees to donate $150 million to the Bird's Foundation. When Marty overhears that Javi is orchestrating a large sale of guns, he convinces Navarro to leak info of the sale to the FBI, as it would help prove Navarro's worth and cooperation to the US government. When the guns are seized by the FBI, Javi deduces that there is a snitch in the operation and refuses to make any more sales, including the pivotal heroin sale to Claire Shaw until he finds the rat. 
Meanwhile, Ruth is trying her best to run the heroin business, but it's a difficult task with the loose cannon Darlene as her partner. When Frank Cosgrove pulls out of his deal to distribute the heroin, Ruth is forced into finding a new buyer for their product. Luckily, Marty is now in need of large quantities of heroin to sell to Shaw Medical, so he and Ruth once again partner together to make a deal. But before they can sell the heroin to Claire, Darlene cuts a deal with Frank Jr. to sell the heroin behind his father's back. Ruth manages to convince Frank Jr. to sell back the heroin so that Marty could sell it to Claire, and the two former rivals actually begin to develop a friendship. When Frank Sr. finds out that Darlene had tried to cut a deal with his son behind his back, he confronts her, prompting Darlene to shockingly kill Frank Sr. Finally coming to terms with how dangerous it was to be associated with Darlene, Wyatt agrees to ditch her to run away with Ruth. Unfortunately, Darlene convinces Wyatt to stay, guilting him into marrying her in order to help their custody battle for baby Zeke. Navarro tells Javi that he is retiring from the cartel and placing Javi in charge. Following this, Navarro finally goes to America to face the FBI and negotiate his surrender. During a meeting between Navarro, Marty, Wendy, Agent Maya Miller, and FBI leadership, the FBI offers Navarro immunity in exchange for remaining as cartel leader for the next five years and serving as an informant. Navarro accepts the offer and leaves for Mexico. Maya, tired of being caught between the birds and and the FBI and their varying tolerances for corruption finally makes a move that she feels is the most morally right. She goes behind the FBI's back and leads local police in arresting Navarro as he tries to depart. Despite this setback, the birds retain their arrangement by having Javi cut a deal with the FBI to act as head of the cartel for the next 10 years and serve as their informant. To solidify his position as kingpin of heroin in the area, Javi visits Darlene and Wyatt and murders them both. With their foundation now at full political power and their deals with the FBI settled, the birds are finally ready to put their dangerous criminal lives behind them and move back to Chicago. When Ruth discovers the dead bodies of Darlene and Wyatt, she turns baby Zeke over to the police and then emotionally bursts into the birds' home, confronting Marty and Wendy with a shotgun. Ruth declares her intentions to murder Javi for killing Wyatt, but Marty pleads for her not to, as Javi's death would ruin the birds' deal with the FBI. Ruth refuses to stand down, murdering Javi in front of Claire Shaw and forcing the birds to clean up the mess. Ruth then forges a heroin partnership with Claire, who abandons the birds and pulls her money from their foundation. With their empire and escape plan crumbling around them, Marty is forced to travel to Mexico to lead the cartel in Navarro's absence, while Wendy does everything she can to get the cartel leader out of prison. As acting leader, Marty forces himself to ruthlessly take charge of Navarro's backstabbing men, even brutally torturing and murdering a man responsible for an assassination attempt on the incarcerated Navarro. Marty then returns to America, and Navarro's sister Camilla, the mother of Javi, is placed as the acting head of the cartel. Meanwhile, Ruth discovers that she has inherited Wyatt's estate, which includes Darlene's shares of the Missouri Bell Casino. Ruth then teams up with Rachel to buy Charles Wilkes Casino shares, giving Ruth a majority stake and allowing her to take control from the birds. Ruth then announces to the birds that she will no longer allow the casino to launder money for the cartel, despite Marty's insistence of the danger that would put them all in. In retaliation, the cartel sends Nelson to enact revenge, but Rachel is able to kill him first. Elsewhere, Maya is demoted by the FBI for sabotaging the Navarro informant deal, and so she teams up with private investigator Mel Saddam to continue their efforts to take down the Bird family. Mel has been hired by both Helen Pierce's ex-husband to find the missing lawyer, and Wendy's father, Nathan, to find his missing son, Ben. The duo discover footage of Nelson at Ben's last known location and bring this evidence to Nathan, explaining that Ben must have been killed by the cartel on Marty and Wendy's orders. Devastated and horrified, Nathan petitions to be granted full custody of Charlotte and Jonah, leading to the court allowing the children to decide for themselves who they will live with. Despite Wendy's pleas, Charlotte and Jonah choose to leave the Ozarks to live with their grandfather. Devastated Stated over losing her children, Wendy checks herself into a psychiatric hospital. Marty threatens to tell Camilla who really killed Javi if Ruth doesn't help convince Jonah and Charlotte to stay. And so Ruth holds Nathan at gunpoint and forces him to admit that he doesn't really care about his grandchildren's safety and only wants custody to spite Wendy. 
Jonah and Charlotte then visit Wendy, and she gives them a sincere apology, prompting them to choose to stay with their parents, which leads to Wendy checking herself out of the hospital. With the Bird family reunited, Marty visits Ruth, and the two reconcile, their dangerous criminal activities finally on the verge of coming to an end. To tie up all of their loose ends, Marty and Wendy orchestrate a plan with Camilla and the FBI to have Navarro killed, and Camilla instated as the cartel's permanent leader, allowing her to act as the FBI's informant. As Marty and Wendy hold a massive gala to set up their ascension as political powerhouses upon their return to Chicago, Camilla manages to threaten Claire into revealing that it was in fact Ruth who killed Javi. And so, Camilla visits Ruth, who defiantly stands her ground and bravely dies at Camilla's hands. As the series comes to a close, Marty and Wendy mourn Ruth, but celebrate their overall victory. Unfortunately, the private investigator Mel refuses to drop his case and breaks into the bird's home to steal Ben's ashes, promising to avenge Wendy's dead brother and bring the birds to justice. Unfortunately for Mel, Jonah takes after his parents, and as the screen cuts to black, Jonah kills Mel, leaving the bird family with yet another body to bury.